Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 111. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're going to start off now with the uh, GT2 Invitational. Um, we're taking the GT2 car. Specifically, the number 71 F430 GT. Yeah, 430. Uh, start off with Sedona, Full Circuit, Silverstone, New York Circuit, Maple Valley, Sebring, and then finishing off with Suzuka. Let's get going. Um, yeah, what was that? Um, speaking about short lifetime of SSD, is there any other storage device that has durability of hard drives and speeds of SSDs? No. Not at all. Unfortunately, it's a compromise that we have to make. You either have... You think the most durable drive out there are tape cassettes, tape drives. They are the most durable form of storage. You can store terabytes on a tape drive. That was terrible. You can store terabytes of files on a tape drive, but they're, even though their read and write speed is similar to a hard drive, if you're actually trying to use it as a drive to access files, it's terrible. Like, as an actual drive, it is super slow. But it's one of the most durable drives out there. Like, tape drives, I think, could last your entire lifetime quite easily, as long as the technology is kept in shape, you know. The stuff that gets stored on tape drives will probably stop working in 20, 30 years. A lot of people, though, that are against TikTok are more against it because it um, sort of relays information to the Chinese government and stuff like that. Which, I mean, <laughs> pretty much anything on the internet nowadays just results to some form of government. Like, we've been on the internet for how long and no one has had a problem with governments controlling our data and then all of a sudden it's a problem so i i find it really confusing oh for f fuck off you prick bmw drivers yeah google the amount of stuff that google has on people is unreal they have like 100 gigabytes of data on each individual hundreds um, but at the end of the day, like, it's the price of being on the internet, really. If you really have a problem with these companies tracking your data, just don't use a mobile phone. Don't use the internet. Stay off the internet. Stop watching television. Because they can still track through that. Granted, it's not, like, personalised, it's more generic, but they can still track television usage. Like, literally live off the grid. Live in the woods, don't communicate with people, nothing. If you want to be that ex excluded, and don't want these companies having your data and all that, don't be on the internet. Like, live in, live in a bush in the middle of the forest. Like, that's the kind of level you need to get to now for, like, true privacy on the internet. Communicate over PDA. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, good. I mean, people find anything creepy nowadays. Um... I mean... I don't really see what, with all the data that Google has, I don't see what ill intent they could actually do. Because what, what will that do? 
what is the point in these companies that have all our data if they do ill intent what's the point because the amount of money that's involved makes it a no brainer to not do ill intent anyways even though they have the power to do it fair enough why would they um it's a similar story with just like I mean, when they need to, but for what reason would they need to? And like people say, oh, but what if the government wants to use it to control us? Like, if the government wanted to control us, they would have done it by now. Governments are a lot more powerful than people realise. A government, if they wanted to control everyone in their country, they would have already done it. I mean, you look at China, you look at... Well, I probably shouldn't say that, they'll come after me. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> but like, they'll do it. Already. It's not like they're going to build up all this data so that they can Surprise you, peekaboo! No. Like, if the government wanted to control you, they'd control you, and it wouldn't even need your data, to be perfectly honest. Like, if they wanted to control you and, like, stop you from accessing certain sites, they'll just fucking pull the plug on them. There's a lot easier ways than just pulling everyone's data and using that because that's an expensive way of doing it so again I don't understand why people are like to be fair le legally speaking if a software has been offered on the Google Play Store and it's been offered for you to obtain it they don't have any legal justification to sue you so fuck these apps that did like block youtube adverts made it so you could download youtube background play all that stuff they were offered on the play store so google themselves offered these products to people so the only person at fault is Google. Now, if you were to use Twitch as an example, if there was a third-party Twitch app, um, on the Play Store, the only person that Twitch could get into trouble is the Play Store. So, Google. They wouldn't be able to sue a user for using software that has been downloadable so google would be paying for the damages that you cause pretty much <laughs> so hell yeah i mean I i'm not one to start conspiracy theories because i think anyone who believes in conspiracy theories is just so far up their own ass it's like unbelievable but, I do believe governments do have some form of control over news. Not so much in the UK. I think those are more biases that certain companies have. Companies like the BBC then legally can't get away with having any biases towards certain groups. Um, when it comes to their news, because... You know, it's the British Broadcast Corporation. If they piss off one part, they piss off the other part. It's a recipe for disaster. But stuff like Channel 4, it could quite easily have a bias. And that's why a, a lot of news articles, you have to look at the wider picture. I very rarely, if I see a news story about something that's going to happen, trust it from one source. I will look at multiple different sources. Um, 
unless it comes from the official source where that information comes from. So, for example, like PSN games, whenever they announce new PSN games on like leaks or whatever, normally I'll check Twitter, I'll check a couple of different news outlets just to confirm that uh, maybe this leak could be okay. Or, I don't know, stuff about Facebook, whatever. You should always check multiple sources, never rely on one to be, like, fully informed. It's like the um, vaccines cause autism argument. The people who genuinely believe that vaccines cause people to be autistic are the people who look at the one or two fake news articles and say, yes, they see, look, they cause autism. They cause autism. I'm not having my son vaccinated because it will ca cause him to be autistic. As opposed to the millions of other evidence that proves otherwise. Um, and it is kind of a, I don't know, you just have to, have to check multiple different sources rather than just rely on one. A lot of people on the internet nowadays though, they'll just see one source and be like, yes, that's fact. And then they'll go with it and they'll either make themselves look like an idiot or just not care, but absolutely shit on everything else in, in their path. I think there should be a punishment for fake news. I think companies should be forced um, to pay a fine. I, I don't know how it would do it because I think the fine should be shared between people who viewed that fake article. But if you view a fake article, there should be some form of like punishment to those fake news. Whoever made that fake news should get a fine to unless they can prove that they didn't know that it was fake news like for example if an individual has given them false information for example that's not really fake news that's just s someone's falsified an information and the news articles have handed that on but stuff like falsified statistics that have been made up by news articles yeah they should be fine big time fuck those companies I don't know what you mean by that Hans I mean again like Governments and shit like that, if they want to control us, they will control us. That's just a fact of life. A lot of people will think, mm, No, if they've got my data, the government's going to control me. No, they're not. They'll do it other means. A lot of the times it's easier for a government to not go through a company like Google to try and get your data to try and control a demographic of people. Like, it's, there's so many easier means of doing it. But again, people are so blind to that. And they'll look at companies like Facebook and say, actually, Facebook is like the first company that started tracking users' data. Facebook, bad. Yet you'll quite easily use all these other websites that are run by Amazon that do the exact same thing and not have a problem with it. Which, again, confuses the fuck out of me. Because I don't understand how people can be so stupid. You know. You think, if, if you create an account, or if you load Reddit, I'm 99% sure that Reddit is run by Amazon Web Services. Which means if you load up a Reddit web page, Amazon has got your data. 
for you loading up that web page. Just by loading up Reddit. But people won't see that. They'll see, ah. My date is with Reddit. I trust Reddit. Ha <laughs> ha. But Amazon also has that data. All these other companies have your data. It's not like your data is restricted to just what you view. Hell, if you use Google Chrome to load up a web page, Google has your data just by using Chrome. If you use Microsoft Edge, both Microsoft and Google will have your data because Edge is a Chromium-based browser now. Which again, I prefer using Edge. It doesn't bother me. I can have my data. I don't give a fuck. <coughs> Ugh. One thing I do want to get rid of, though, is this fucking cough. It's pissing me off. You bastard. Holy shit, is that level four? No, just level three. What kind of stuff do you do then, Hans? I don't think you've actually said what that um, work you do. Rem, 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 rem. Rem, rem. Welcome to Ram Ranch. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> See, that's a great idea. Except for the fact that it doesn't... So the way that YouTube sees um, fake engagement is slightly different to what it used to be. Um, if you're creating multiple accounts and running them off the same IP address, it doesn't work. YouTube can detect that. So that is comes under their fake engagement policy and you can get banned for that. So I myself, I can do it off my main account and watch the videos, that's fine. I can do it off a different account, watch my videos. I can't load up multiple accounts and just keep doing that because that is straight up. Just, it won't work. YouTube will be like, hang on, this IP address with all these accounts are watching this video a hundred times. Um, and that's again why you shouldn't do that either. Just do it on one account on your own account but like if one if everyone in this stream now runs my stuff in the background while they're working listening into the chats that and the random crap that we're chatting about which is kind of why the the way that I format my videos is the way that it is because you can just listen in um and sort of listen to the stuff we're talking about. Um, and still run it in the background. And it still makes sense. Somewhat. Um, and the second part. Streaming it on Twitch. To be perfectly honest. I don't think there's a point in me streaming it on Twitch. Because that's lost. Like viewership. The revenue again. Like I know I've said about ad block and stuff like that. Like oh it's taking away revenue. The amount of revenue I earn is minimal anyways from YouTube and Twitch. But there is the potential that that lost view time will harm how the YouTube performs. So I, I have to keep everything that's on YouTube on YouTube, everything that's on Twitch on Twitch, um, and keep the two separate. I can't go and live stream my Forza playthroughs on YouTube and then upload them to YouTube because if I do that my Twitch will suffer because then well what's the point in supporting him on Twitch if you know I could just watch on YouTube and it's the same story with if I start streaming all my videos on Twitch well what's the point in going to YouTube to watch them to try and support him on YouTube you know it, it, it it makes sense um, and when you're sort of when you're presented with the numbers 
it adds up. Um, but yeah, if you do want to uh, help support the channel, drop some likes on the videos, uh, sit down, listen to them in the background. Uh, and go through the entire playlist because I mean the more of the videos that actually get engagement the more the channel itself gets engagement because like an individual video can get a lot of engagement if um, what's it called if the video itself has done well like for example my car mechanic videos are still doing 40, 50, 60 views a day, easily, which is just adding up to the huge number of views that they've already got. But it's the newer stuff that needs the engagement more than the older stuff. Because the older stuff is just going to run on its own now. That's going to be, a, I mean, it's been at a steady 30, 40, 50, 60 views for over a year now. So. In my opinion, that doesn't need any help whatsoever. What does need help is the new stuff that I'm making, the Forza Motorsport series. And I mean, with the size of this series, I would like to see it do pretty well. I want to have a look, see exactly how much this series has done in terms of like views and revenue and stuff like that on YouTube. I doubt it'd be it. Oh, so you basically get on the iPad stuff that you've got to, like, pick up. It's all like delivery. So you get the order, you set up the order, and then you send it out, and then the delivery driver takes it to them, basically. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, what, like, uh, like Amazon, kind of. So you get all the stuff and then you send it to the packaging and then packaging packages it and then send it to delivery. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, see, I kind of have a visual image of what you do. I gotta go around um, some of the shops and hand in my CVs. I've, I've got like... 10 plus 15 plus roles that I've applied for which is like quite a lot of roles when you think about like job searching but I mean they're taking weeks to respond absolutely no responses whatsoever from like I haven't had a response from Vodafone which I mean there's Vodafone advertising everywhere here which is why it reminded me um, but yeah, Vodafone had no response. He's the only one that's gotten back to me. Um, they got back to me about a week ago. Um, and they just said, yeah, we're not going any further with it. So, basically I'd applied. And they just said, nope. Nuh-uh. I actually wonder, is there a three store? In Cardiff. You might have to apply that. Do 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 I really do need to figure out a way like I've tried so many different things to try and get my Twitch chat more active. Um, people don't realize how important it is like a stream is never successful unless the viewer interacts 
like a majority of the work when it comes to a stream. Like ev everyone can be a good streamer quite easily, but they need the viewership. They need the people in chat to provide their part of the deal as well. And like a lot of viewers that view Twitch think, oh yeah, but streamers should be able to stream. They don't need me to do any... No, that's not how it works. Bigger streamers that have chats that they just cannot keep up with, yeah, but they have all the viewers backing them. Like 10,000, 20,000 people that are watching. That they actually do have to just create content. That they can't include their chats. But for smaller streamers, the viewer is probably more what carries the stream than the streamer half the time. The streamer sort of keeps everything together. It's like the glue in the middle. And to be fair, for a viewer, it's not a hard job to sit, chat and chat. Even like a, ch a chat message every five, ten minutes can do so much for a stream if you have five people there. Because that's a message a minute. There's enough talking points that you can conversate and that really helps the stream. Like, one chat message every five minutes or so really does help. That's why whenever I'm, like, watching someone stream, um, I'll, I obviously know I can't, like, sit there and just... 100% attention into a stream because that's not how I like to sit there and chat with a streamer and whatnot. But I will always sit there, send a message every five minutes. If we're having a conversation, conversate and then, you know, conversate for a couple of minutes and then spend 10 minutes. Because again, a chat message every five minutes or so, approximately, really does help both the streamer and the channel. But viewers, viewers don't realise that. They think like, oh, lurking is the best way to help that benefits me. No, it doesn't. A lurk does nothing on Twitch anymore. By all means, you can say, oh yeah, I'm going for a minute. But a lurk does nothing. Like, a stream that has five viewers with five active chatters is always better than a stream that has a hundred viewers but only one active chatter. Like mathematically you might earn money more money from the other one. But in terms of enjoyment factor, that smaller channel will always be better. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm obviously not saying as an individual you don't do that or whatnot. But I'm saying it's like a generalization. It's not just on my channel, there's a lot of channels as well. And a lot of streamers that seem to think that that's how it works, which really baffles me. I, I, I don't even think more efficient is the right word. Like, efficient, obviously, yes, correct. But I think it is genuinely better because of the fact that the stream is a better environment that will grow a lot quicker. Like, the numbers can be there, but I can guarantee you, in terms of how much growth that smaller channel will get, probably be a lot more than that bigger one. <laughs> I didn't have time to mute my mic. The cough just came on. <laughs> that was a bad cho poor choice of words. Ow, that really hurt.
I'm gonna have to be like Ned from South Park and use one of those voice boxes and just be like, eh. I throw no work. <laughs> Something like that. Oh. <laughs> right. Let's go to the next race. We're at 104 hours now, which is mental. We're gonna probably be at about 105 by the time we finish this today, so. When I can't play or simply join in, everyone tunes what I do play, but when I am able to join stream or game, nobody does the stuff I do play. Yeah, I mean, that's funny. I mean, I pretty much own... I don't think I fit in that category. Because most of the time I am playing stuff that... Um... You know, can't play. Oh, by the way, Hans. Um, you need to, if ever you're wanting to do Euro Truck Sim, let me know, because I'm fucking enjoying it. Like, really bad. As long as it's like a stock version of Euro Truck Sim that you're running, no mods or anything. I have all the map DLCs, so I can go anywhere on the map. But we, we need to do some Euro Truck Sim together. Because honestly, like, even if it's just... I, even for a stream, if you want, like, you're a truck sim. I'm enjoying it. I think the the one reason why I've been enjoying it more lately is because of the fact of how good it runs on Steam Deck. Like, it runs pretty good. <laughs> Legally. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I had, um... Only Scandinavia and going east, but again, I've got no problem with even the base game. Like, just because of how um, easy it is to just jump in, pick some stuff, we can quite easily just sit there and. Oh, by the way, the DLCs are actually on sale at the moment, so if you're looking at getting some for a cheaper price, have a look. Um, even if you only get like one or two, it's definitely worth having a look because some of them are on sale for like, I think they're 60%, 70%, something like that. I'm not 100% sure because I own them all now. But. I'm sneaking around about around money for time being. Fair enough. I still have, um, I think I've got 120 grand worth of loans that I've still got to pay off, but I've still got 20 uh, in-game days to pay that off, so with the amount of money that I've basically got to, um, one truck, one driver, and then my own truck, so I've got two trucks, but only one's being driven by a driver, um, and I've got a three-truck garage. Um, so hopefully within the next like four or five game days I should hopefully be able to pay it off because I've already paid off 108 grand's worth of uh, loan so both through repayments and just outright paying them out um, I, th I think by the time I finish all of my loans I will have paid back about 50 grand in interest which, I mean, it's not bad to be able to, like, bump up into your own truck a little bit earlier, but... I mean, te technically speaking, I still have those through legitimate means, because I've not cheated. I've just gotten the money early so that I can get that, and then I'll pay it off. Because I'm, I'm not planning on taking out any more loans on, on the game. So, I'll just earn the rest of that money get the 120 grand or whatever it is, pay off the loans. Um, and then once I've done that, I doubt I'll take any more out unless I want to do like a big upgrade. Like say for example, I'm buying a truck, but I need 100 grand more. Because then that should be something a lot more manageable that I can earn. Um, but like if I'm buying a new truck, just a couple of jobs will end up getting me 
up to like the hundred grand mark anyways. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the DLCs I have round about only for Convoy in-game, though. Is there, like, a, a DLC that gets you more money? Like, I don't know, do does some of the cargo DLCs give you more money per mile for them? I, I, I don't know. I've literally only bought map DLCs. I've not bought any other ones. And what what's the uh, tuning ones as well? Are they, like... Do you get new trucks in the tune-in packs, like the Renault tune-in one and stuff like that? Is that a DLC? Double trailers? It gives you extra money. I'm just thinking, because if I can buy a DLC that gets me a little bit more cash, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Also, isn't there... An kind of no point in Trucker's MP anymore now that you can do convoys because convoys is pretty much um, what Trucker's MP was it was just a real pain in the ass to set up I remember setting up Trucker's MP before convoys came out and it was just such a bitch I gave up on it straight away Yeah, I suppose, but I, I mean, convoys let you have eight people. Point me out eight friends that all have Euro Truck Sim that I'll actually want. I I thought it was eight maximum because whenever I set up a convoy, it only lets me add eight. Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, when when am I ever going to be in a convoy with more than eight people? Chads of that are slim. I wouldn't mind if they updated it to 16. That, that could be a cool update. But. Well, of course you can. Mr. Oh, I'm so popular! <laughs> As opposed to, oh, I'm Mr. Lonely here. <laughs> Get the fuck out the way. Move, you prick. This panel just doesn't want to move out of the way. I'm the one that joins all these. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, like, I've got my Steam Deck. I've got custom controls, so I use the back panels for changing stuff like cruise control. And I, I don't bother with engine braking because it's too much of a hassle. I know you can save a bit of fuel if you use like the right engine braking settings, but what's a tiny bit of fuel gonna do? <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got the back paddles on the back buttons on the Steam Deck all set up for like. Yeah, I think mine's on automatic anyways. But I've got uh, cruise control and um, the sort of page finder. Navigator, page, buttons, whatever it is, left and right. So I can change the screens on the navigator, which you can't actually do on a normal controller. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, the Steam Deck only offers four extra buttons. But you technically six, because if you set up the trackpads as their own buttons as well. Um and don't assign them as a d-pad you can i think the trackpad technically speaking you can have as eight more buttons if you touch like the top of the trackpad the left of the trackpad so technically speaking you can add up to 12 more assignable buttons to the steam deck as a controller which is fucking crazy i think that's amazing Honestly, this, a lot of people don't realise how good the Steam Deck is until you get it. Like, I was so hyped for the Steam Deck before it came out. And a lot of times when I've gotten something, like, 
the Oculus, I think, is the only other thing where I've been like, oh, I'm actually pretty hyped to get whatever it is, and, uh, okay. Like, the Oculus, I was like, oh, this is actually really good. This is really good. And still, when I get in the VR, it's still really good. Um, compare that to... Say, for example, even my PC. I use my PC because that's a great example. I was hyped up so much for playing VR and stuff like that from Monday. Oh, do you want to do it tomorrow? Because um, if I'm feeling off, I'm not actually going to be able to do my Forza stream tomorrow. So I might just chill and do a Euro Truck stream instead. If that sounds good. So is it from Monday tomorrow? Because, um... I'm having, again... Whole week at work. Okay, fair enough. So does that mean we can't do it tomorrow? I'm confused. Yeah, I know tomorrow is Monday. That's why I'm asking, is tomorrow good then? To do it or not? Tomorrow after 4 p.m. I got no problem with that. Chill in for a bit. Grab the wheel. Go for some cruising with some tunes. But yeah. Let me know on that that one, and uh, I'll see. Get back to you on that. Uh, the only thing is, I won't be able to use Trucker's MP, so it will just be combos. Ah, uh, fair enough. Alright, well, keep me updated then. Um. Because I think I'm going to do the same as what I've done this week. I'm going to try and do Forza on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Just because of the fact that I don't think my voice is going to be fine tomorrow. And I don't want to have, like... I've already got eight episodes where I've got a dodgy voice and a sniffly cold and cough and all that shit. I don't want that to be 12 episodes. So, I'm hoping if I give it a couple of extra days, by Wednesday, I should be all fully reset. Um, and I should be able to stream, record my falls and stuff, and not have that cough. So, Oh, fuck you, fuck you. I just noticed him overtake me. We got very close to the finish line there. Go back. I'm taking this. I, I'm not doing the same as what I did last time. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> I don't care if that's a cheat, I'm doing it. Come at me, bitch. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.